once again, gentlemen, Jim Taylor. Victoria Baylor, professional dressmaker. Pretty dressmaker. Oh, he's so sweet. I like your colors today, well, by thank the way. You, thank very you. Sharp, very thank sharp, very sharp. Um, welcome to another episode of the Taylor and the Dressmaker Show. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are in July, aren't we? We sure are. Oh my gosh. First week in July. Crazy. Half, half. Half the year is gone. Thank you. That's half right. Is Christmas gone. is right around the corner. But it's been great. It's it been really great. has. Has yours been great? Ask yourself that. Ask yourself, will it get greater? That's right. The best is yet to come yet to for come. us this year. Yet to come. Yet to so come. with that being said, today's episode is going to be pretty straight to the point, but we mm -hmm. hope it's going to be informative. Mm -hmm. We want to discuss... Uh, basically, how do you keep or maintain your sewing information systems? How do you do that? You know, that's a good question. Yeah. So what we want to do is uh, offer some good pointers and tips on how to do that. Essentially, what we find, Mr. Jim and I are talking yeah. about, a lot of sewers uh, have difficulty completing projects in a timely manner. That's right. And oftentimes, it isn't the lack of information. It's just that oftentimes they're not uh, prepared properly. Preparation. That's right. So, you know, either something's missing or they got to run and find something mm -hmm. or they forgot how to mm -hmm. do something and they get to a part and they're sewing and then they had to refresh themselves. Well, we're going to offer you some system ideas yeah. to cut down on all that time. So essentially, how do you maintain and keep your sewing information together? Yeah. Oftentimes people reference DVDs, like a lot of you have Mr. Jim's DVDs. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen our courses. Some people have their favorite sewing books, things mm -hmm. like that. Those are great, but oftentimes you can't get to the information as fast as you want right, to. Right. So it's better to consolidate the information. So that's what we would kind of encourage you to do today. And there are several consolidation systems. So what you can do is you can take, you know, oftentimes people keep a sewing journal. Sewing journal. That's right. Book to They'll keep their information keep in it. Information. Sure. This is really this is one from way back when for me. I was uh, kind of mulling over some ideas. So you can see there's sticky notes in there. There's drawings. This is a graphing paper kind of mm -hmm. journal, so this kind of helps a little bit more if you want to draw or you need all the added lines. Mm -hmm. I use this in research science, so these are always kind of fun for that kind of thing. Um, you can go with a bigger book. This is one of mine. Uh, it actually has huge blank pages, mm -hmm. and on those blank pages I can write, which I have, believe it or not. I wrote in like protocols on how to do what stuff. Yeah. This is actually how to yeah. do crystals. I did a video on that, so if you didn't get that video, please look it up. I'll post a link if you want to sew or glue crystals. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this is when I was in my planning stages for that. And then I had I took Mr. Jim's um, Taylor jacket course a few years back and kept my notes from that. And I kind of keep those housed in there, mm -hmm. something like that. So anyway, this is a sample type notebook. And make sure they're handy where you can find them. Yes. There you go. Because you don't want to look for them and you don't care. Remember <laughs> where you put them at. There. That's right. So going back, getting on or moving on to probably a better method. Um, I kind of like the, the binder with the plastic, plastic uh, covers mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I took a moulage co uh, course. So this is just basically instructions on mm -hmm. how to make your own sloper. And I bought this for a particular individual. Uh, Kenneth King, I guess I might as well say his name. Give him a shout out. <laughs> Since it's right there. Anyhow, so I printed it, and then I just put it all in plastic right. sleeves for protection. Um, you can do this with all of your particular resources that you yeah. like. Yeah. So, like, if you see, ma I actually have one at home. If you have magazine articles you like from threads, mm -hmm. even screenshots. So, you like something from mm -hmm. Mr. Jim's video, you can take your cell phone, take a screenshot of it, Sit. put it in Word, Sit. write the little um, directions mm -hmm. underneath it, print it out, keep your own binder, even add tabs to it so you can organize it and index it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that So yeah. that's a great way. So for instance, case in point, last night I had to make bees and pockets for a client's pants. I couldn't remember how to do it. So I had to run, I because I don't make them every day. So I ran over it. Thankfully, Mr. Jim had his uh, tutorial on YouTube. So I kind of Googled that real quick, looked it up, refreshed myself. But I went on to do something, which is another system that I'm finding very handy in my own personal life, you can also do the index yeah, card system. Index card. These are the five by eight size index cards. These are nice and big. And what I like to do, and I have a few of these at home, and I think I'm gonna start one for sewing because it's pretty nifty. You can buy the organizing tabs like that, uh -huh. A through Z. And I'm doing this already. I do some kind of personal stuff. So I have cards for all kinds oh, of things, cool. and I file those. You see how organized she is? Well, organized. that's funny. 
that's because when you mess up all the time and you're running around yeah, like a crazy person, yeah. you lose so much time though, don't you? You, Trying you to find lose, stuff? you know, I always talk about time management. Oh my that's gosh. a part of time management. Absolutely. Okay. And then you can buy the blank cards. This stuff is really cheap, especially if you buy from Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Jim made an ad suggestion. It was very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. You can even take this and attach to it like a finished sample. Right. Or you can affix it in progressive right. stages so you can have mm -hmm. stage one and then have the piece of that's like you it. know the the besom lips that's and it. everything and what you need to do directions underneath uh flip over the card finish that's it right. up that's and right. then file it away under pockets under p mm -hmm. slide it right in there you know i always talk about the the three most important things in sewing first straight stitching second pockets and zippers, second and third pockets and zippers. And you could very easily take the card and you can put the outline of what it is, mm -hmm. turn it over or vice versa, because this is blank. That's right. That's right. Write That's the steps. Way. What's the first step that you do? Mm -hmm. What's the second step that you do? See, that beats the time factor That's in right. going back to the DVD or whatever other source of information you use, putting it in, programming it in, and finding that section. This is your section real quick. Absolutely, real and it's quick. an excellent reference. And it's kind of funny, I think I'm just gonna consolidate all my systems, because yeah. usually like what I'm sewing with my sewing machine, mm -hmm. and I, have, I use different stitches, like for a narrow stitch, or if I'm doing chiffon, mm -hmm. there's like mm -hmm. a fancy zigzag stitch I figured out how to use on my particular sewing machine. Well, on the back of my sewing manual, I'll actually list all the different types of stitches I use. So whenever I go blank or I can't remember, I'll grab my sewing manual, look on the back side, oh, this is the stitch I want, and this is the settings. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just think about one way to just systematize everything. Sure. Sure. Whichever one works sure. better for you, whether it is the cardstock system. Mm -hmm. I use this system actually for my, um, if you follow me on Instagram, not Instagram, uh, Periscope, mm -hmm. under 10,000 hours. Um, I actually use this system to file my recipes for when I'm cooking. Uh -huh. So I, if I, what are recipes I get out of magazines, even for my own cookbooks, I refuse to just go back in my cookbooks and always thumb through. Yeah. I just copy those, mm -hmm. photocopy them, and put them in, and then just organize yeah. them by category. Everything that we do, Make one thing rolls, rolls into the other. That's right. If you make a bees in pocket on a pair of pants, it's the same pocket that you're gonna make on a coat, on a jacket, whatever. That's right. If you set a zipper in, it's a zipper. That's right. That there's three types of zippers that we set in, but it's still a zipper. Get you some quick reference. You, know, you always hear me talking about practicing, and we all know practice makes perfect. There will come, trust me, there will come a time in your sewing experience where your practice becomes your daily application. That's right. Especially straight stitching. <clears throat> Absolutely. That becomes a daily routine. So you don't really, so you get past the practicing of the sewing straight because it becomes a part of your life. It's daily. Okay, what you do, you still need to sew it straight. Mm -hmm. The pockets come up periodically, unless you're doing a large project. That's right. Where you're making a lot of pockets. Setting in zippers also comes up routinely because it depends on the garment that you're making. But it comes a point when you just have it. Now, I'm blessed. I got it. But I've been doing it for a long time. But I still tell people, don't get me wrong, it still didn't take me long to get it. That's right. Because I concentrated on doing it until I physically got it. Don't think I got, you do it once, you look, oh, I got it. No, you don't. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, yeah. it's like I always talk about the game of life and sports. Athletes learn the game, get in the game, play the game. And two days later, go back over the routine of doing it over again. Sewing it should be the same way. That's it's right. just that athletes, when you get to a certain point, you got it. The rest is just repetition of going through the motion. You're right. You know, and sewing is the same way. And it's so important that you say that. You, we might sound like little parakeets and broken records, mm -hmm. but it really everything stems from just the repetition. Mm -hmm. I think I heard somewhere they were talking about the great John Wooten. I forgot what mm -hmm. basketball coach. Anyway, he's a legendary basketball UCLA. coach. UCLA. You say it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But he's, uh, someone mentioned that every time, I guess, a new season started, 
he had everyone, it doesn't matter how experienced they were, That's right. put on, I think practice, put on their socks and their is it cleats for soccer, but yeah, whatever yeah, shoes they wear for yeah. football. Mm -hmm. And he had them practice, put on their socks, their shoes. And a lot of people, it was like, that was remedial. It was like, why would you have us do yeah, that? Yeah. But he said, you'd be surprised. The small things that you forget to do correctly, correctly. affects right. you. And think about it, if your socks are bunched up, or your shoe isn't laced right, and you get out on the field to play, yeah. You're going to mess yeah. up everything. So we're saying the same thing. And this is actually great because mm -hmm. it segues into next week's um, show where we're going to talk about how to teach yourself or how to go through the practice of doing sewing drills. That's it. It's probably not a bad idea to keep practicing and just kind of, because it will come second nature if you uh, are consistent in your practice and thorough. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I think I heard that I think is very relative is someone said, I can't remember where I read it. I just read it this week. It is hard to start being um, creative in your sewing when you haven't mastered just the, the technique itself. Ooh, it's a, I think, the technique. Well, it was very profound. If you really think about it, if you're trying to become a designer, it becomes a distraction when you don't know how to properly do something or you mm. don't know how to execute it. You mm. want to get to the point where you can throw a dress together, you can throw a zipper in there, mm. don't even think twice, because then you can harness all your brain right. power on That's the right. product. The, um, creativity right. part of it instead mm -hmm. of actually putting it together. It's like dancers. Uh, I think that was the analogy they use. When you look at people that are really graceful and dancer, they don't think about like the movement and this and that. They're so busy being creative in mm -hmm. their movements, mm -hmm. but they know the rudimentary parts of how to extend your leg as a ballet, how to go on point as a you know ballerina, stuff like that. That is ingrained in them. Yeah. Then they can let all the stylistic stuff go. Right. So the same thing is true sure. for sewing. I had a new student that has come to me this week. We've been sewing for a while. Used to be a basketball player. Oh. So she knew what I was talking about when mm. I talked oh, yeah. about discipline the drills, and drills and the discipline mm -hmm. and this and the other. I'm not going to mention her name because that's not important. I'm going to mention how her life was. One week she's come to me, but she's been sewing a long time. Very, very creative in the style factor that she wants to present to the general public. But yes, she lacked her quality skills. Now, within the week, what I told her to do, she would leave my studio and go home and practice this. Now she comes in, she says, people look at this, and they look at how it was, and they say, wow. What a change in wow. a week. Mm -hmm. Only don't because this it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. she, she was in the flow because she was an ex-athlete. And she was in the flow of doing things repetitiously over and over again. And she took the methods that I showed her how to do, and she started applying them, said, Wow, I didn't know you could do it that way. Or you the long story short, within a week's time, she could sew straighter than she had been. Wow. Now I say that only because her sewing was fairly good, but it wasn't great to sell to the general public. See, my thing is always this. You can sew forever for yourself and be thoroughly satisfied with what you do. Mm -hmm. But when you exchange your goods and services for their numerical exchange, they want it right. Now she's got that. She was having, she was putting in zippers and I asked her, how do you do that? Because I always ask you, when you say you've been sewing, I'm going to ask you how you do it so I can see. Mm -hmm. When I first met him, we went through the same now, thing. How you do that? <laughs> Who told you that was right? Who told you that was wrong? Well, I don't never say how you got to the end, you know, the end justifying the means, but show me. If my way is better, trust me, it's, it's better. better. See? <laughs> but it's as, I, faster. as I say I'm going to show you the fastest and most efficient way of doing this sewing application that I have learned through the years. That's right. Her stuff now is begin becoming a turnaround. Now, she's only going to be with me briefly, but what she's accomplished in this short period of time, now I'm showing her how to adjust patterns. I have a course on that. And you know, and hopefully what she's doing is taking that information like we're suggesting today and either keeping a good notebook going. She has a notebook, people. Great. 
and that she will have this at the at her hands length mm -hmm. that if she mm -hmm. needs it in the future because no one this is the thing i think what people forget and then we're going to end this but people tend to think that they're going to remember everything yeah. i don't know about you guys i got a lot in my brain i got a lot swarming yeah. i'm handling a lot yeah. of stuff i need to make it easy why not make it easy on yourself that's right put a system together make mm -hmm. your sewing a lot faster that's it. so that's this, and I'm actually gonna do, I think I like the note card method, I'm gonna try something new, or I might do the binder, but I will bring mine back next week All right. for everybody to see. And if you have one too, or you put something together, we'll make a call for those, you can put them on our Facebook page. That's it. Um, but next week, we are dealing with sewing drills. We're gonna give you an idea of what it's like to train with one of us, mm -hmm. and uh, how to get those showing, sewing skills very sharp. So, yep. Yep. we're gonna do that. Yep. Anyway, well, you guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, thanks. Love you guys. Uh, go forth, do great things. God give you good uh, skills, purposes, he all did. the wonderful he stuff. Uh, go ahead and use that, and we will see you next week. All We're signing right. off. Victoria Baylor. Gentlemen, Jim and Taylor. Bye. Bye now.